Cancel. Do you got your notes all written down? Yeah. No one's taking so long. <laughs> Two guys, one podcast, wild abandoned sexuality of a stallion. He has more and more respect for you every time we do this show. <laughs> Two guys, one podcast. It's theater of the mind, baby. Anything I show you on the internet is fact now. You just like to see dreams crushed. You are the crusher of dreams. No, don't get me wrong. I'm a cool guy. <laughs> Two guys, one podcast. And this is the podcast. Welcome to Two Guys, One Podcast. I'm one guy. I'm the other. And this is the podcast. Episode four. Yeah. We've made it through a patch where we recorded a bunch in a row, and then we've also now recorded even after we took a, a long hiatus, which is, I think, like that's a big question on whether or not you're going to continue to do this. We didn't do it for seven whole days or eight whole days or whatever it's been. It's like, all right, well, let's get back together. Not only do we want to, we were excited about it. Yeah. I mean, right. One of us is excited about it. In those eight days, did you miss it? I did. I Well, no. What it did was, for me anyway, it allowed me room uh, to kind of recharge. Like, I thought of some new things. I developed some new opinions. And also, I think it helped me put a finer point on what I wanted, what I want to say with this, what I want to do every week. Did it not for you? No. <laughs> All right. Let's get to some viewer mail. Damn it. I did it again. Listener mail. We don't have any viewers. Nobody's got a camera in here. If they do, we're in serious uh, shit. Somebody, I was talking to somebody about this last night. Uh, yeah, I haven't got a chance to watch episode two. And I, I made the same comment. I was like, me either. You're not watching it. You're yeah. listening to it. It just shows you how much uh, had video has killed the radio star. Since there's no video, people in their minds, I have a picture of how we look. I wonder if people think I'm more handsome or that I'm uglier than I really am. If you feel artistically inclined, uh, email us a sketch of uh, one guy or the other to two guys one pod at me.com. I'd love to see sketches of both of us. And if you're the type of person who thinks I'm uglier than I actually am, I don't think you're too attractive either. <laughs> uh, listener mail. JaVale! JaVale is here! Woo! Our mutual friend has finally caught up with uh, the podcast. He's, he's very busy. <laughs> he's very busy. Uh, he's got a kid. He's got a family. Uh, he's got two kids. Job. Two kids. That's I forget. Just, I always forget about the you younger. Just killed one. Those babies don't matter as much to me. That's it's the eldest oh, child. I've already discussed that. The oldest child does matter more than you. See, you said it again. <laughs> So he's got two kids. He's got a lovely wife. You know, he's going to back to school. He's, he's a hardworking guy. Anyway, uh, he finally sends in a review to our uh, email box. I like the two guys, one pod thing. Makes me think of clones or twins, except there's no Schwarzenegger, just two kinds of DeVitos. Mm, I like those pizza DeVitos. <laughs> uh, are you the, I I suppose I'm the the uh, plain nacho flavored DeVito. I might you, be ranch. You're cool ranch. Yeah, you're cool might, ranch. Yeah, Come I think on. I'm gonna be ranch. Yeah, like I'm definitely not spicy. It's a little fattening. It's definitely flavorful. Ranch has been around the block. Everybody loves ranch, motherfucker. I mean, I'm, I'm too old to be spicy. <laughs> I go to bed at eleven. That's spicy. So uh, thanks, uh, our mutual friend, for piping in. Hopefully, we'll hear from him more in the future. He's also going to be drawing, uh, or at least the plan is, he, he might draw some sketches to uh, do serve as episode artwork. That, that'd be cool. Looking forward to that. Here's another one to the email box. Uh, a review from One Pretty Redhead. Uh, I'm not going to trust anything this email says because already she's a liar. If I had a penis, I'd have a hard-on for this podcast. Sincerely, One Pretty Redhead. P.S. Love your show and your girlfriend sounds awesome. <laughs> one Pretty Redhead. Not true. I'm not going to talk about redheads anymore. They're not real people. If they had a soul, they would be higher on my list of people to talk about, but they don't. Nice. Come on. We, be honest. We love we love all kinds. Uh, she also shared this awesome YouTube video in response to your dream of the longest uh, domino track. Uh, it's a human mattress domino track. I mean, they set up the hundreds and hundreds of mattresses uh, with people holding them. Uh, lined up so that like one falls and it hits the feet of the next person and yeah, they I've fall seen and it. so forth and so on. Anyway, there'll there'll be uh, links to that on our Tumblr page this week as well. So uh, can you imagine a person that like you have an inner ear infection and you go and so your bounce is a little off? 
and they put you in the middle and you just can't stand up. Yeah, you just fuck it up. Uh, it was the video is hilarious. They got this this guy just like cheerleading them on. Nobody get ahead of themselves. Everybody just be patient. Everybody be calm. We can get through this. You can do it. It's it's all we're doing is falling down in a row. <laughs> <laughs> but we need like constant instruction from the voice on high. It's pretty funny. So anyway, thanks for uh, your listener comments. Uh, if you listen to the podcast and you want to respond to something, you could find us uh, at two guys one dot dot com. You can ask us a question there. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, facebook dot com slash two guys one pod, or send us an email two guys one pod at me dot com. I've never admitted to a mistake. <laughs> I've made a huge mistake. I've made a huge mistake. Uh, let's do some mistakes. We don't make mistakes. <laughs> uh, we don't make mistakes. What happens generally is week to week, one of us makes a series of mistakes. A couple weeks ago, you made them all. And then the next episode, it was all about my failures. Here's a big one from me, though. And thanks for the mass of people who pointed this out to me. Three is a magic number. Sesame Street did not teach me that. For Christ's sake, man, it's Schoolhouse Rock. It's the premiere episode of Schoolhouse Rock, even. Three is a magic number. It was the pilot episode. Well, now, don't you feel silly? I do. I feel, I feel ridiculous. I, uh, you're not a big fan of Schoolhouse Rock? No, I don't think you should feel silly about this. And I don't. It creeps me out a little that adults know this. When was the last time you watched Schoolhouse Rock or Sesame Street? You're like 9, 10, 11? That's been years, man. Nobody's going to expect you to know it. I got kids. I got two kids. Well, that's true. Yeah. Well, Schoolhouse Rock is a Yeah, but they're not on. watching the pilot episode of Schoolhouse Rock, man. I sometimes they've seen three as a magic number. They also really like you the are one so about stuck eight. in a box. You're making your children watch the things that you're comfortable with because you've already seen it. I, we also watch some some new shows too. Though. No, they watch new cartoons. You put around the house while they're on. Yeah, that's that's true. When I'm when they want to watch with daddy, I watch something that I like though. Like we watch Laugh Olympics. We watch we watch the Gummy Bears. Uh, they love you know Pink Panther and and Wile E. Coyote and all that stuff. And Schoolhouse Rock. I can't believe. So anyway, three is a magic number. It's from Schoolhouse Rock, not Sesame Street. Shame on me. Um, Rube. We talked about Rube Goldberg last week and his fantastic machines. I said Rube's a stupid fucking name, and I'm right. Rube from, uh, and this is from dictionary.com, an unsophisticated person from a rural area or a hick. Uh, The origins 1895 to 1900. The generic use of Rube uh, began around that time as a a hick. And that's the same time that they named this guy Rube. What the fuck, man? I'm not surprised at all that this segment is called We Were Wrong and you have to point out where you were right. Just interesting. Boo. All right, then. That People will be so confused when they hear this part. Yeah, he's wrong. Wait, he was right? He was right. And he Bastard. And he's just it out on, on, on air. Uh, here's the other thing that I was wrong about. I ranted righteously against our local college because they have four letter I's in place of four o'clock on the big clock tower. Right. And I said that, you know, I thought it was odd. I thought it was wrong. But I'm not going to question them because they know more than I do. On Roman clock faces, so on sundials uh, especially, and then following forward as as they turned into clocks, people continued this tradition. Uh, four I's is often used in place of IV for the four o'clock. Uh, this is apparently because IV is an abbreviation for Jupiter in Roman times. When you're writing the, the god's name Jupiter, uh, you would write... Uh, I, which is their J, and then V is is the modern U. So it's an abbreviation for God. You'd read the clock if it if it had the I V in that place. You'd read the clock one two three God five. So out of uh, deference to him, they put the four eyes in there instead. Yeah, I was I, I was a complete ass. I can't believe that there's such an obvious reason for it. Can't believe you're not up on your Greek. <laughs> it's Roman, but I can't believe Roman. That, I can't believe that 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 tradition has followed all the way through. That it's that it's just as simple as oh well that used to be God's abbreviation so we don't use it anymore. Yeah, people do that stuff all the time. Like they get in a pattern oh because my grandpappy did this. That's the way I do it. And that's the way you do it. Well, there you go. I fucked it up. Four eyes is just okay uh, to use on your clock face. Not only okay, it's right. <laughs> yeah, if you do it the other way, apparently uh, most people will think you're kind of a, a pretentious ass who doesn't know his history, like me. <laughs> But who would expect you to know that? Um, I would have. I would have expected me to know that. I, that's the kind of inane trivia that I know. That's the kind of shit that I love. 
Well, like most things in your life, you should probably lower your expectations. <laughs> Maybe so. Have you heard about the latest sports trial that's going on? Other guy. Are you referring to the Dallas Cowboys and Washington Redskins suing the NFL? Uh, no. No? Are you talking about Jonathan Vilma suing the commissioner? No. I don't know. I don't. We don't cover the normal here on Two Guys, One Pod. We cover the strange, the grisly, some might say. Headline, California MMA fighter faces trial in grim slaying. This is uh, from May 23rd in Eureka, California. And you can find links to this, by the way, on the Tumblr page. A mixed martial artist accused of ripping out his friend's still beating heart. What? (laughs) No. Yes. (laughs) That's not true. <laughs> yes, it is. I swear to God. Here's the deal. This incident. <laughs> What's he doing? He's got some sacrifice or something going on. Oh, it gets stranger, my friend. Where's Indiana Jones when you need him? I know. I know it's exactly <laughs> what you think, right? Okay. <laughs> Who was there? Who was this? Was was this writer there who's writing the port there? Yeah, the fucking heart was still beating. I mean, it just was. <laughs> Like, well, there's forensic you know? evidence. There's forensic evidence based on based on the like where the blood clotted and the way that it clotted when they're doing the autopsy. They can tell at which point which wounds were inflicted. I mean, you've seen CSI. They can say this person this person was thrown in the lake after they died. This person was shot and then brought somewhere else based on where the blood went or whatever. This person's been dead for seventy two. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's still it's awesome, right? Okay, I mean, it's terrible that he killed this man, but. A mixed martial artist accused of ripping out his friend's still beating heart and removing the man's tongue and skin while he was alive is competent to stand trial on murder, mayhem, and torture charges, a Northern California judge has ruled. Did they just throw mayhem in there? Since when is mayhem a charge? And also, let's lock your kids up. Why try him uh, on mayhem and torture if you're going to try him on murder? Try him for murder. Death penalty, right? Right, but but they're thinking they're thinking that maybe something could come up to where you can't the, you, the murder charges won't stick or something will come up. So you know it will at least get him on mayhem and torture. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. Okay, so the man's name is Jared Wyatt, uh, twenty seven years old. He's from Klamath, uh, California. I'm assuming they've charged him uh, in the death of his friend and sparring partner Taylor Powell. This guy was twenty one years old. A pair of psych- uh, psychiatrists determined why it was mentally competent to stand trial, and the trial is set for September 10th. This happened in March 20 March of 2010. It happened two years ago. We talked about it then. I talked about it on on a sports station here locally in an MMA segment. I had just forgotten about it. Which, when you read the report, you're like, how can you ever forget that this thing happened? Well, I think I made the mistake that when he said he was an MMA fighter and ripped the person still beating heart from the chest. Like, I saw him do it with just his bare hands. That's exactly what he did. Authorities went to a home near the mouth of the Klamath River on March 21st, 2010. They found Powell dead on the couch with his chest cut open and his heart, tongue, and the skin of his face removed, according to court records. Yeah, uh, see, I mean, he had to cut the skin off this dude's face. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're probably right. Okay, Wyatt, uh, who's the guy who did it, they found him naked and covered in blood. It's acknowledged, just weird. I know. He acknowledged that he had killed Powell and cut out his heart and tongue. Uh, the authorities said. An autopsy revealed that the organs had been removed while Powell was still alive. His heart was found charred in a wood-burning stove at the home. Now, here is the question of the hour. He's doing a ritual, man. So you believe it was... He was possessed. Religiously founded. I wonder if he thought he was going to eat his heart and then take his power inside of him. According to witnesses. Those are the three most interesting words in 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 the story to me. Motherfuckers saw some of this happen. And didn't say anything. No, and went and reported it. That's why the authorities came. Some they were you, me, and a whole bunch of buddies are hanging out working out. And this happens. The two had ingested hallucinogenic mushrooms. Imagine that. They were a little stoned. Believed they were part of a struggle between God and the devil. That's how it started. You, me, and a bunch of buddies, a bunch of workout buddies, are hanging out wrestling and getting high. And all of a sudden, you decide that I've got Satan in me, and you've got God in you, and you have to free me from the gra- from the I wonder who, of Satan. Who won? Oh, you're saying maybe Powell wasn't? Yeah, maybe he was the devil part. You don't know. 
Oh no, I, I I think I think I read in the earlier this one doesn't say it, but I think I read in the earlier story that he was freeing his friend from the grapple of from the grab from the uh, grapple of Satan. I don't like the story that much that way. Yeah, <laughs> you like better if Satan wins, if the fake Satan wins, if the imaginary hallucinogenic mushroom Satan wins. Well, I th- and I think they should like if you're if you're taking hallucinogenic mushrooms, Satan's already won. <laughs> So the judge ordered additional evaluations before Wyatt could be cleared for trial. Wyatt's attorney, James Fallman, said he agreed with Follett's decision and doesn't see the need to seek a jury trial to determine Wyatt's competency. He's been better lately, Fallman said. (laughs) (laughs) What? (laughs) Yes, in the past two years, he hasn't uh, ripped open anyone's chest or eaten their heart or uh, face skin. Or ingested any shrooms. Yeah. Yeah. All right there. So... The lesson is, kids, don't get into MMA. Or shrooms. <laughs> don't do shrooms. <laughs> Ugh. Can you, what would you do if I just Die. all of a sudden, I'm saying, you, me, and our mutual friend, the three of us have started working out together. That's going to happen. You, <laughs> okay, but in this world it has. You, me, our mutual friend are working out. Let's put it on him since he's not in the room. <laughs> he comes in a little off, a uh, little unhinged that day. We can both tell something's a little wrong with him from the start, but it's not overt. We're just going through our routines, and all of a sudden, he punches me in the face, stands over my prone form, and begins literally ripping my chest open with his bare hands, trying to get into my chest. What? Do, how do you? What do you do? I fall on my knees and begin to worship. <laughs> I start chanting. I let my eyes roll in the back of my head. What's that thing they chant in the in the new Batman trailer? Rise. Yeah. Yeah. And hopefully he doesn't notice me. I run screaming. <laughs> screaming. I'm so sorry, other guy. I'm so sorry, other guy. You don't uh, you don't you don't run from a bear. If he's busy breaking into your chest cavity, I do. Um, so neither one of us would try to save the other though. <laughs> yeah, not in that situation. Dude, if he's First off, he's bigger than both of us. I'm assuming he's stronger than both of us, Yeah, he's a big too. cat. Yeah. So, but even so, even if it was you, or hell, if it was me, if it was the weakest of the three that turned crazy, I would be, I would completely understand if both of you ran away. If, if an insane thing happens like a person that you know and that has been a normal person in your life suddenly starts tearing apart another human being, you just fucking get out of Dodge and call the authorities and let somebody else deal with it. That's, that's not... Maybe they are possessed. And if so, there's nothing I can do with Satan. I got, I got nothing for Satan. I'm sorry, other guy. I got nothing to save you from Satan right now. I mean, I got Jesus. I want Jesus. I want Jesus to take care of me. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I just kind of wish somebody would have, you know, had the wherewithal to take out their camera phone and snap oh, and a couple shots. Took a picture of it? Oh, I just want to no, see how you do that. I don't want to see it documented. I don't want to see it documented. I can't even. Oh. I don't know. It's got to be pretty hard to rip. A heart from a chest. To dig it. Or even rip your tongue out. Like if you use your hands to rip your tongue out, a tongue's a hard thing to grab, man. But these are MMA fighters too. And you gotta assume okay, so we know they were taking shrooms because they they copped to that. They're probably doing steroids too, right? Or something. And they're at least working out heavily. These are really strong guys that know how to pull and tear each other's bodies apart anyway. Like they're specifically studying that. And 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 I should say, in in defense of the MMA world, this is not a guy that anybody would know. He was not an actual like professional MMA fighter. He's just a guy who liked to wrestle with his buddies, it sounded like to me. And apparently the the guy who had his heart ripped out wasn't that good. I don't care about him then. <laughs> if you don't want your heart ripped out, get better. Here's the pulse, all right? And this is your finger. Far from the pulse, jam straight up your ass. Let's look at a little entertainment news. A couple of big shows that you and I like a lot. Um, a lot of shakeup here at the end of the season. Community, oh. they finally did get picked up for another season. But are you going to watch it? They shit can Dan Harmon, the yeah. creator of the show, the creative voice behind it. They fire him, say that he's going to be involved in some capacity as a consultant or something Getting like that. Getting coffee. Yeah, Dan Harmon came out on his Tumblr and made it very clear exactly what capacity he's going to be involved in, it, which is none. He said, my input will be recognized just as much as... If I send it from this Tumblr page or if I say it out loud in that room and the paycheck will be the same either way as well, hats off to them. Best of luck. But I got fired and there's no yeah, two now, ways gra- about Now, granted, community, when you look at the ratings, it's not as high up there. I mean, it's really generally a low-rated show. Like, it's a niche show. It's weird. It's not for everybody. I wonder if they made that change thinking 
if we get rid of Dan Harmon, we could probably make it a little more mainstream and then create a whole new audience and, and bump our ratings up. Round off the rough yeah, edges. I would, yeah, I would think that that's part of the reason. I think the only reason that show hangs together is because Dan Harmon spins it so far out to the edges as, as far as believability and... There's no edge for believe. There's no believability. I mean, there's no edge. Yes, exactly. So, I mean, it's so it's so meta and self-referential and, and inside baseball in a lot of ways as far as people who are force-fed their whole lives pop culture. Those are the people that he's writing for. Himself, effectively, and others like him. I don't think the show works at all if you if you take off the rough edges. If yeah, you, I'm not going to watch it. Yeah. Well, I will give it a try because I like all of those actors. And, well, I'm, and, and I'm in, I am invested in those characters. Here's, uh, here's something else interesting. Spoiler alert. So Starburns, the guy who plays Starburns, is one of the writers as well. Yes. And his character was killed off. Yes. Except at the end of the finale, he's back. Yeah, you see him reading a book, How to Fake Your Death or something like yeah. that. And then he's in the bathroom changing a wig. Yeah. Yeah. No, I just imagine when, like this, like Dan Harmon, you know, they're writing and he's telling the other guy, no, dude, Star, sorry, Starburns is dead. You're not going to be on the show anymore. It's a dead character. It's not going anywhere. And that guy is like, oh, I'll show you, Dan. I'm going to get you fired. Oh, no, you didn't read the, uh, there were some articles in the middle of the season when they killed him. That writer asked for the character to be killed off. He never wanted to be on the show. He was just... He was used as a stand-in to read lines for a particular scene, and then he was used once, hey, we need a guy that looks like this to stand there. And the Starburns became its own joke. The writer asked to be killed off well, so that he back. wouldn't have to act. And now he's back. I, that's, it, it blew my mind. I don't see where they're going with it. I will give it a try in the fall. I am very upset about the Dan Harmon thing. Now, my question is, where does he go next? Where does a guy like that go? He takes a nap. <laughs> Maybe so. Think about the comparison between him and Joss Whedon. Both of them seem to be too clever for their own good. They both have these rabid fan bases that can't seem to translate to a more mainstream audience. And yet, I mean, Joss Whedon just knocked out the Avengers. Yeah, well, here's, here's the deal with these guys. I kind of associate them now with what Tim Burton used to be. Like, Tim Burton was just clever for his own good. Yes. And he had no one to corral him. And now he's just fucking weird. Now he's crazy, and I don't watch any of his stuff that he does, and I won't. I I just don't like him anymore, although he's... Nightmare Before Christmas is amazing. So, yeah, like, I feel like Joss Whedon has somebody... He has a no guy. Yeah, and then he he wins some battles, and he gets to explore, but I think he has somebody corralling that. And I wonder if... I don't know Dan Harmon personally. I mean, he might be a nice guy, but he could be a dick, and he could be the kind of person that was like, no, it's this way, it's this way, it's this way... And wouldn't listen to the no guy or, or isn't receptive to it. And the people are like, no, you're not about to Tim Burton us. See you later. While I agree that you do seem to have to have that, the no voice. In a lot of ways, I think it's what you give me. Like you, like, I, like I'm like, hey, let's make a unicorn. And you're like, a unicorn's fucking stupid. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, but what you do in the meantime is you're like, what we ought to do is make a fucking dragon, bitch. Yeah. Uh, you know, whenever we're editing. Cut that, cut that. Yes, exactly. That's crap. I'm like, oh, there's 20 minutes in the middle of this that's gold. And you're like, there are two good minutes in the center of that. Cut that two minutes out and leave the rest of it on the cutting room floor. (laughs) And you know what happens is we get better stuff because of it. You are the editor for me a lot of ways. The Coen brothers seem to work that way as well, and they bounce off of each other. It didn't work for the Gallagher brothers, either one of them. Uh, Well, the one was a little too unbalanced, though. There was not enough yang for the yin or something you know they weren't they weren't equal they weren't equal poles and i'm not talking about polacks <laughs> i don't think I don't, they i don't think they are of polish descent and i don't think anybody thought you meant that oh, oh okay well i just wanted to be clear now you just come off as racist oh well i love it <laughs> dark side points to me so dan Harmon got shit canned meanwhile cougar town it's moving to tbs of course they're bringing in new showrunners as well. Different situation, though, here, because I think what it, what it comes down to is uh, Bill Lawrence is kind of graduating. He's becoming the admiral of the fleet instead of the ship's captain. With the move to TBS, I think they're planning on cutting some budget, and Bill is one of the places where he felt like he could cut some of his own budget, and he's going to be there as a consultant and, and steer the big-picture stuff. But Rick Schwartzlander, he used to be with Gary Unmarried. He's going to be the executive executive producer and is going to oversee the uh, yeah he'll oversee the comedy in the fourth season. Who's going to oversee the drama? 
so they've, they've bought 15 episodes for this fourth season, and Bill is just going to be there kind of as an, a, an, an overall consultant. I mean, I'm sure he'll be involved in, like, the arc of the season or the arc of the next couple of seasons. Yeah, I don't, like, I, either of those shows. Community affects me a little more. Cougar Town, all right. I think the show that kind of bumps me out the most is House is now gone. Yeah, but at least they got to do it with some with finality on their own terms. I right? haven't seen it. Like, I have the last episode. You still haven't seen it? No. Uh, I thought you watched it. I'm going to let it linger. Oh, I do this with books, too. That's beautiful. I'll get, to like, I'll get to like the last three or four chapters, and I'll just set it aside for a month. This is maybe the sweetest thing I've ever heard about you personally. That's like your ooey-gooey center. Yeah, I just don't like things to be. I don't like finality. You really don't like saying goodbye, do you? No. That's awesome. Aw. Well, you won't have to say goodbye to Cougar Town. It continues, and Bill Lawrence is even on board with this. So I say kudos to TBS for doing things the right way. You can't afford the show as it's currently built. Well, then go to the creators and say, hey, how do we trim things down? And I feel like NBC could have probably done the same thing with Dan Harmon and Community, too, if they had just included him I don't in the know. discussion. Dan Harmon, now in my head, he's he's a maniacal asshole, so... Which is probably not true at all, but I seem like, you know, he he puts on women's clothing and a Hitler mustache sometimes after 10 p.m. and just dances around his his apartment. I don't know about the Hitler mustache, but uh, NBC and, uh, of course, Sony Pictures Television is the uh, production company behind Community, and they're moving on without him. Uh, They've got talking points that are out to all the actors and the people behind the show. You know, they've, they've got the party line that they're parroting and uh there's going to be community on the year next year with no dan Harmon involved sad day i won't watch it other guy yep let's do a little if you could oh i like if you could everybody likes if you could and if they don't fuck them <laughs> nice if you could have the lead role in a next generation handoff type movie of any franchise what would it be doesn't have to be a movie that's already had a sequel or a prequel or necessarily lends itself to franchising. It can be any movie at all. Does need to be a film, though. So give I, me an example. Well, okay. If you want to be John McClane's son in Die Hard 6, for instance, and now they're going to turn the franchise. Bruce is a little old. We're going to hand it off. Other guy, you're going to take the reins, and you're going to be Junior McClane in even fucking harder to die. <laughs> Die a little harder. Yeah. Uh, uh, or you're Mr. Miyagi's next student. You are the even later karate kid. Yeah, but I kind of already done that. Uh, yes. I'll tell you the one that I would want to do and know that I could never, I couldn't, I couldn't bring myself to do it because it'd fuck it up. I'd love to be in a Godfather movie. Whether it's following Godfather 3, and so you see the family begin to legitimize or further bury their illegitimate past, or since I'm not really Italian, maybe I'm young Tom Hagen, and you make a movie set after Vito's already in power, but before Sonny and and Tom and Michael are all grown men. I would love to be in The Godfather, but there's no way you can add to that story. Those are three of the best movies ever, or two of the best movies ever made, and another one that has their same name. So leave him alone. Um, I would be. I would want to be Leonardo DiCaprio's character. I would want to be his son in Titanic. That's that's the movie I want to make. His son with Rose. We're assuming that he has an illegitimate child with Rose because of their nights of passion. Uh, I don't. I'm not the fucking writer. Make it happen. I'm just telling you what I want to do. Uh, so what would be the plot line of of such a movie? Titanic two. It would have to be. It'd have to be a hell of a story. Yeah, it'd have to be. It'd have to be an amazing story. It'd have to be the best movie of all time. You're just saying. If you thought Titanic one was amazing, <laughs> what do you see this shit? So you don't you don't have a pitch for a plot line. No, that you not like at to all. Follow. Not at all. You just asked if I could do a next generation movie and take on the role. I'd I would want to be somehow linked to Leonardo DiCaprio in uh in Titanic. I'd want to do Titanic two. Nice, nice. <laughs> There's not a superhero that you'd like to take on to, maybe? Like, I think about, well, for instance, I really like what they're doing right now with the X-Men franchise. I liked X-Men First Class a lot. It was a really solid film. I'd love to come back in and play, well, like Cyclops when they bring him back into that world or something, you know? Another one that I think would be fun to do would be, you know, a new Jaws. Yeah? You want to be uh, uh, Roy Schneider uh, or his his son, the sheriff? No, no, no. I would want to be uh, Robert Shaw's character. I would want to be Quint's son, the shark hunter. Like, 
he uh, you know he gets eaten by <laughs> by Jaws and and now I'm I'm just back with a vengeance and I'm killing every shark. No, okay, no Jaws is one that's already had like three, four, five sequels. Generally, when you get up that high, are you, are you going to go the Tremors route? Does does Jaws evolve and get legs? So now Quint's chasing him in like a jeep, like the Tremors four or whatever. Yeah, no, I don't think it's so much about Jaws as it is just Quint's kid. It's just Quint's badass son. Yeah, you know he's got to be pretty hardcore. Who needs a bigger boat? Yeah, <laughs> I think that'd be that'd be a fun one to do. That's, or that's your movie poster ooh, tagline. The right one, I think. The right answer is to be uh, Charlie's son from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Like Willy Wonka gave it to you. It's it's Charlie's now. What did he What did he do with it? Did he continue running the business? Did it go up? Did he kill all the Oompa Loompas? <laughs> Commit mass genocide. Yeah, I mean, because candy is dandy, but liquor is quicker. <laughs> I mean, how how hardcore thinking, did he hold to that mantra? You thinking they got a firewater, uh, they got a firewater problem there. The yeah, like, Loompas. Yeah, what, yeah. What, like, I don't want to see that movie remade like they did, like Tim Burton did. Right, right. I want to see a sequel, not a remake. Yeah, yeah. I think okay. So if I can't do Godfather, I love that you either want to be in Godfather or have superpowers. <laughs> It's like a super realistic film or complete fanciful nonsense. Yeah. Uh, I'd totally be Harry Potter's son, except I'm not British. I I lose more and more respect for you every time we do this show. <laughs> we mentioned the idea of man scouting. You described my sash as too small. I, I want to know more. So there's already a concept out there of man points. You hear that a lot. Well, you got a man point. Oh, dude lost five man points. But for what? There's really not any rules. It's whatever douchebag number one says douchebag number two did or didn't do. Right. The idea of man scouting is there's a system of badges, just like in the Boy Scouts, as you get your merit badge and you, you know, you become the better Boy Scout, right? The more you learn, the more you grow. So the same concept, but with man scout badges. You take a Boy Scout badge, for example, horsemanship is a Boy Scout badge. Horsemanship, a noble endeavor. I've I've done a little horseback riding myself. Yeah, but you I mean you have to learn how to take care of the horse, uh how to take care of the equipment, clean the hooves. You know, all that stuff, not just riding. The man scout version of horsemanship, horsemanship <laughs> with the W. With a W. You don't want the horsemanship badge. Right? It just happens just like, you know, you lose man points. Well, there are badges that have negative connotations. Horsemanship is one of those badges. So you would be penalized with, you'd be flagged with a horsemanship badge. Yeah, like that would be a bad thing. Like points can be taken away. Nobody sees points. A badge you see, like that stain on your soul doesn't doesn't come off. It's like the scarlet letter on your sash. Out damn spot. Nice. Like it's not going to happen. Nice. All right. Um, so when you get your horsemanship badge, when you get your first STD... <laughs> I like that. I like that you went. I like that you specified your first STD. Well, if you're whoring around, chances are you're gonna catch a couple. You're gonna catch a couple. Yeah, you're you're sleeping around. You're so, promiscuous. 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 So you and I. It's a difficult word for me to say. <laughs> so this is a world. This is a world that I didn't grow up in. I again was not a great looking dude. I was I was in long term relationships paying dividends in to get any booty uh, when when I was in my uh, my prime horsemanship years. Describe to me the world in which this exists. Your your roommates were the guy. You see the uh, the prescription cream in the bathroom, and so you flag him with the horsemanship badge. I think dudes talk about it like you want a buddy. Like hey, like man. you're sleeping around, so obviously you know you're not having any attachments to these girls. You're just you're in college. You're ex- Exploring, you're having new experiences. You're working on your horsemanship badge. So you get your horsemanship badge when you get your first STD. Okay. So if I cure the STD then, do I get to take off my horsemanship oh, badge? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, fuck. You can cure that STD, but the stain on your soul does not go away, sir. Let that be a lesson to you, kids. <laughs> that badge doesn't stand alone. Okay. So there's kind of a good version of well, that. The Boy Scouts have a public health badge. Well, Man Scouts also have the public health badge. And that's a good badge to have. You get the public health badge when you keep a friend from attaining the horsemanship badge. <laughs> if we're out and about and we're both single and I'm at the bar and I've had one few too many. So, uh, hey man, uh, just get back from uh, from the bar there. Uh, Susie. Susie's sitting at the bar. She, uh, she was digging me, man. She's picking up what I was putting down. 
Yeah, you might be picking up what she's got on her down low. Why do you, you, you want to shut it down? Every girl that's into me is a whore? That's what you think? Dude, don't you know? that's Dude, that's Susie Shooter, man. Susie Shooter? Yeah. After you get with that, you get a shot. <laughs> Old penna? Yeah. Gotta, gotta put a little penna on it? Yeah, you don't. You don't Fuck, want cons- man. You don't want that, man. Uh, and so that guy gets the public health badge. Yeah, I now have the public health badge. I like that. Once you get your horsemanship badge, you use that knowledge to pay it forward and earn your public health badge by helping out a buddy. Yeah, or you just know the girl's a whore. <laughs> and make sure somebody else has to wear a horsemanship badge, too. Yeah, you could be that guy. I've got mine. Now you've got yours, too. <laughs> Now we're better friends. Let me uh, let me introduce you to my friend Susie. Yeah, <laughs> we can share that experience. That's an experience I don't want to share with you. Here's an experience I do want to share with you. Again and again and again, people ask us who we are. So starting right now, it's a good segue. Thanks, I appreciate that. Yeah. I'm the king of the segue. Here's a little segment we like to call "Who Are These Guys." We're just going to make it broad questions, questions we can kind of go back and reminisce a little bit uh, and give people a little bit of the story of us. I got to thinking the other day about the last time that I fought, the last time that I was actually in a physical altercation. I thought that I nailed it, that it was seventh grade. What, you nailed the fight? No, I thought that I got it. And I've got these vivid vivid memories of, of this fight, and I thought, yeah, that was the last one. I was wrong. The fight that I was remembering, a good guy. We're Facebook friends now. Uh, he's got a little you boy. You hit him with the friendship gloves? I did. I hit him with the friendship gloves. He's got a little boy now. Uh, you know, we kind of keep up with each other's lives, and he's a good guy. At the time, though, we're both 13 and stupid, and and it started for some reason about I, my mother. You know, we got you got mad over whatever you got mad about, and then he escalated it with uh, your mama. You know, oh, how very urban of you. Your mom is so fat or something like that. I That's I, that's literally what it was. And then all of a sudden we were fighting. Was it was he creative or, or was he just like, your mother? I was so, I had this weird, I almost all of the fights I've ever been in have started because somebody said something about my mother. Like, it's not, and I'm not, I, I'm on record as being a mama's boy, but... But it's like it's like Michael J. Fox in the Back I mean, to the Future get, movies. You call him yellow, and like immediately he goes into a rage and has to fight you, right? Like yeah, don't you get call me wrong. I love I love my mother. My mother's one of my favorite people. Have you have you defended her honor with your fists, sir? Um, no. In my head, I thought, oh yeah, this was my last fight. I was it was seventh grade, and and I liked that fight as my last fight because I won. I he was probably a better fighter than me. Probably could have whooped my ass, except for the fact you just that fell on him. I. I started it because he because it it like erupted from the words and just the rage boom and I was on him so put his head old Joel put his head put under down my, a snack pack yeah no it wasn't a snack pack it was a bag of Doritos because I don't I don't I don't <laughs> but eat. you were eating but you were eating at the time yes yeah I was, <laughs> was he- <laughs> yes so yeah so I put down my bag of Doritos and fucking jump on him right and it's like I threw like the left arm around his head you know it got him like down under my arm kind of deal and it's like noogie and like punching him in the top of the head and then like stuffing one under the the gut and stuff what's the line from Princess Bride (laughs) hello my name is Inigo Montoya and you have ruined my Dorito (laughs) (laughs) you have you have dishonored my mother and ruined my Dorito lunch prepare to get your ass whooped <laughs> and then that's how it went yeah it's pretty much like that so so i yeah so i like threw my arm over his head you know like got him in kind of a headlock type thing and i'm like boom boom into his head hockey and then fight. like yeah hockey fight style like just jersey over the head kind of deal and i'm just sneaking him in under his gut and that kind of and he's hitting me in the gut and like i think maybe he got my balls accidentally or you know like with a little shot under the legs and it was like oh and i had to let go of him for a second and it's like he's throwing me into the locker and i'm throwing him back i got the best of him is the point i held my own fat kid did all right defended mama's honor kind of deal that's a good fight in my memory and it's and i was happy about that one the greatest day of your seventh grade career i don't know that i'd say that it was one that i look back on fondly yeah, I was like, hey, I did all right there. Like, it was a thing, and I got into it for the right reasons. It was silly. It was, it was seventh grade, and he said my mom was fat, and so I wanted to whoop his ass. And I picked up my bag of Doritos, and they never tasted so good. Yeah, they were they were the best Doritos ever. They, it's, I drink from the cup of victory. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> I must recover my strength. <laughs> so that's what I thought was my last fight. You were wrong. 
Oh, I was way wrong. Last time that I actually had a fight, it was like a year and a half or two years later than that. And I got my ass whooped and <laughs> cried like a bitch. It also started for no good reason whatsoever, like fights do when you're 14. Uh, it was in PE. We were coming. Spider Man's we better than Batman. Or some bullshit. Yeah. No, I tell you what it was. It was my smart mouth. I've always the dumpy kid. I found out very early on. If you make the popular kids laugh, they don't make fun of you. They they you make fun of the other person. You point and laugh at that guy. And if everybody's laughing with you, they can't laugh at you. Yeah, but they still go. Oh, ha, 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 ha. The fat guy's funny. Yes, but the fat guy gets to come to the party if the fat guy's funny. And so I was always, I always wanted to be that guy. And it worked mostly good for me, except when I picked on the wrong guy. And and this day in particular, we were coming out of PE, so we're going up to the locker rooms, and I've made like two, three, four cracks or something about this kid over the course of the class. And I'm not picking specifically on him, but like he would say something, trying to make a joke, and I would one-up him and make him look a little foolish. And I'd done that a couple of times. And in retrospect, it's obvious I was smarter than this kid and I was picking on him. That's what it amounted to. And I shouldn't have done it. And I didn't think about it like that because he was a better looking kid and more athletic. Obviously, so I you feel weren't like, the smart one because you got your ass whipped. Yeah, well, he came in and punched me in the face. Yeah, everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the mouth. And that's exactly what he did. He punched me in the He didn't talk about it. He didn't he didn't say, Hey man, watch your fucking fat mouth. He didn't I'm gonna I'm gonna jaw you one. He just fucking punched me and it was i don't think i've ever been more shy i did he hit me in oh, quick succession it was quick succession he didn't like grab my face and like pound it into the pavement or anything like that it was just boom 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 and it was literally one and then about four hits Squill. real quick he was wearing a ring too he left a fucking imprint on the side of my face man but he wailed on me a little bit and and i'm you know like arms up pushing him off but yeah, I'm also fucking blubbering. There, there's. I remember very specifically sitting in the principal's office with like ice pack on my face, still sobbing a little bit. Like, <laughs> I he beat he beat like, the shit out of me. I didn't bleed, but I mean, I was I was in a, a lot of pain. Dude, everybody who gets in a fight is eventually gonna get smoked. Everybody's gonna get beat up a little. I mean, you just, just take your ass whipping like a man. Like that dude just whipped my ass. I'm done. I think now if I got into a fight, I think that would probably be, even with pain, I, I my pain threshold I don't think is very high, but I, I don't think I would react to a punch in the face now with tears necessarily. You lost your last fight. You got smoked and you cried. and I did. I got beat up and cried. That's my last fight. How fucking sad is that? It happens. So I was I'm 14, 15 years old. That's my last fight. That's the last fight that I have to hang myself on as a man. You remember your last fight? Yeah, but it wasn't very interesting. Okay, so here's something I want to talk about. All right. So in episode one, you're kind of the bad guy, yes. right? I'm unfeeling towards chimpanzees yeah, in particular. Yeah, And in episode two, I'm kind of the bad guy. Right? I want to take horrible nude photos and give them to my friends. You didn't actually want to take them, but now you're even taking them oh, yeah, now, further. Now you I'm just wanted to them. use the dirty <laughs> photos from ugly people, but... So that got me thinking that whenever I watch TV shows or cartoons and people struggle with whether they're going to do something good or something evil, up pops the the shoulder angel and, and shoulder demon. Generally, two ways are depicted. Either it's an actual representation of an angel and a demon, or it's that person as if they were an angel or a demon. Right. One, they're red and they got horns, and the other one, they got a halo and a harp. Right. Whenever I have conversations in my head, it doesn't go that way at all. It's not like three versions of yourself? No, because why would I listen to me, right? <laughs> so in my head, I do have a good side and a bad side. My, my good side, my shoulder angel, is Stephen Hawking, and my demon is Mel Gibson. He's a pretty good choice. Stephen Hawking perplexes me, though. Stephen Hawking, of course, uh, the brilliant astrophysicist. What does he? What does he have? I don't even know what he has. He's wheelchair bound, of course. Has been the entire time that he's been famous. I think. Uh, no, he was a, he, that that it's, it's disease. Yeah, it came on in his twenties. Oh, okay. Yeah, and he was supposed to only live like another ten years, but he's yeah, fooled he's, everybody. But not known as a moral authority. I don't think anybody would. Uh, no, but I don't. I'm not choosing these specific characters. weren't chosen for morality reasons. They were chosen for emotional reasons. <laughs> so Stephen Hawking is. Cool, calm, collected, very well thought out. I mean, he has to be well thought out. And factual. And factual, yeah. He's got all his ducks in a row. Dude knows what he's talking about. I should probably listen to him. <laughs> and then Mel Gibson is complete 
emotional wreck, fiery, generally just doesn't give a fuck. Insane. Now, are you talking about like sugar tits, Mel Gibson? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know that I could handle having him bark at me. It would keep me from doing wrong things, I suppose. Yeah, you. It's easy to turn that like, guy down. Yeah, if you don't just represent it as good and evil, you know, I like this guy. I'm I'm going to listen to Stephen Hawking. Dude's a genius. This guy's crazy. I don't know if I need to listen to that side of myself. See, this this may be a problem for why I tend to make bad decisions, even though I like. Wait, who do you myself. who do you have? Well, I tend to in my head I hear my own voice. Of kinda, course you do. It's kind of three versions of my own self, but. If I was going to give them forms, I think I would choose, who is it, Max von Sydow or whatever from Needful Things as as my devil, you know? Very seductive, intelligent. So somebody's uh, already been representative as evil. Yeah. If not him, somebody may be a little bit more forceful. But even then, it's it's an attractive forceful, like, uh, like Al Pacino from The Devil's Advocate or something. He likes to do fun things, other guy. That but still, but fun. still somebody who already been represented as evil yeah yeah i mean my devil created what was it passion of the christ <laughs> yes i'm not listening to that guy because he's crazy <laughs> he made a jesus snuff film <laughs> yeah so so he's he's got good things attached to him right yeah not Some, listen to him not that's crazy. that many not that many though let's let's he's been on he's been washed out of the good stuff since braveheart pretty much honest to goodness braveheart and, and lethal weapon four it's the last time Mel Gibson was thought of in a public light in a very positive way. Well, no, because Passion of the Christ, like everybody, everybody loved him. Uh, some people, even then, it was very controversial. So, so you pick a Catholic for your devil. I pick a Scientologist for my angel. If if Max von Sydow is my if Max von Sydow is my shoulder demon, then John Travolta as Michael is my shoulder angel. Hey, man, I don't know. Just take it easy. John Travolta, you would pick John Travolta as your angel. You would listen to that guy. Oh, well, okay. So John's got some problems. I don't, I'm not asking for John Travolta to come be my shoulder angel. I'm asking for Michael to come be my shoulder angel. I just I just picture him as a big, hairy guy that's a little laid you, back. You, like that's who you want to listen to? A sweat hog angel. Yes, a big, a big sweat hog angel. Hey, Mr. Cotter. <laughs> <laughs> so you're taking John Travolta as his, as the person of his entire career, not something recently. Yeah, no, not the real guy. I'm talking about the the Hollywood fantasy that that we that we have crafted for John Travolta. Neither of us picked a girl. That's because I don't think women have anything to offer to a moral discussion. <laughs> you have no soul. <laughs> oh, it's just the redheads. I forgot. Okay, if if you're forced to pick a girl, who do you go with? Let's limit ourselves then. The shoulder angel. My shoulder angel and shoulder devil is the same person. If it's a woman, who? Uh it's. Uh, oh, what's her name? She was in uh, Harlem Nights and also touched by an angel. Harlem Nights and touched by an angel. Yes, she's the she's the head madam in Harlem Nights. How would you not pick her? She's already, like, she's got both of them. Bam, bam. I've never seen Harlem Nights, I don't think. Oh, what is, it's amazing. Is that the Eddie Murphy? Yeah, it's got uh, Eddie Murphy, Red Fox. Della Reese. Yes, Della Reese would be my shoulder angel and shoulder demon if, it, if they had to be female. If it's got to be female, I like Elizabeth Hurley as the devil from Bedaz- Bedazzled or yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was a sexy devil. <laughs> and, you, and you want her as your angel from Austin Powers? No. I don't really like her that much. She was just really hot as the devil. <laughs> um, uh, for my shoulder angel, oh, I would want Kristen Chenoweth. Isn't she heavenly anyway? I don't I, know I, who that is. Uh, she was on GCB. Uh, she was on the, the later years of The West Wing. She's Glinda the Good Witch. Oh, yeah, Wicked. yeah, okay. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, Kristen Chenoweth. She's she's angelic in her own right. Really? 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 You would listen to that? No. I would kill that shoulder angel. After I killed her, then I would be the guy ripping somebody's still beating heart from their chest. So, no, I don't want her as my shoulder angel. Because she would get me in trouble. Liz Hurley is telling you to rip that dude apart. Yeah. I'm like, whatever, Liz, and your cute little British accent, this bitch on my right, because that's where my shoulder angel sits, got to go. She got to die. Like, like they're trying to tell me to do stuff, and I'm saying, Liz, please kill that bitch for me. Please kill her now. Oh, but other guy, we need to go downtown. Yeah, no, fuck that, no. And then Liz Hurley, as my shoulder devil, goes and kills my shoulder angel for me, because that's how I roll. Maybe it's just that you need more counterbalance. 
So you give the shoulder demon a handicap. And you give the shoulder angel a leg up. Stephen Hawking is literally my shoulder angel. If anything, he he's the handicap and does need a leg up. What? Like <laughs> you, sir, are wrong in this. One hundred percent, completely wrong. I don't even want to hear the rest of the. I don't even want to hear the rest of the thought. This podcast is definitely not endorsed by the ADA. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's funny. Thanks for our uh, new intro theme music and uh, the outro song that you're going to hear from Professor Shy Guy. You can find him. There'll be links on our uh, Tumblr page and our Facebook page. As for those links, visit us at twoguysonepod.tumblr.com or on Facebook, facebook.com slash twoguysonepod. And you can always email us, uh, whether you've got submissions for the show or uh, comments, bitches, or if you want to ask us a question, send it all to twoguysonepod at me.com that's the show until there's some more show i'm one guy and i'm the other and this has been the podcast this was a triumph i'm making a note here huge success it's hard to overstate my satisfaction aperture science we do what we must be correct we can Yeah.